Hey and welcome. In today's video I will go over the absolute basic about building a parametric family. The first video will be the introduction video of a larger family series, where with every new video I will add more complexity, like if statements, formulas in general, nested families, yes no visibility, arrays and so on. Many are tempted to use the model in place because it's easier in the moment. And you might wonder why we should use families instead of model in place. Well, while it may take a little more time, uh, Revit performs much better with families instead of model in place. Another benefit, once you've created a useful family, you can save it and use it in a future project. Over time, you will build up a library of valuable families for yourself and your company. So, I strongly encourage you to opt for creating a family. We start by going to File, New and Family. As you can see, Autodesk provides several options. And sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming what to choose. Like we have a family template for fire alarm device. So much to choose. Uh, for this project, I will keep it simple and choose the metric generic model. This is usually my go-to choice to maintain flexibility in your family. And if you're unsure, starting with the generic model is a safe bet. You can always change the category later if needed. Choosing a different template might restrict your design options. For example, if you choose a template with hosted families, you will be creating a family that relies on another object. So we will go for the generic model. Inside the generic model, our goal is to create a parametric family. But what is a parametric family? Parametric designs refers to creating objects or models that are defined and influenced by a set of parameters. These parameters can take various forms, such as numerical values, rules, formulas, or relationships between different parameters. These factors collectively control the design of the object, allowing for flexibility and adaptability. Uh, for instance, in Revit, you can create a parametric window family. This window can be controlled by a set of parameters that can be modified. Let's say one of the parameters is the window height. When you adjust the window height parameter, the window heights inside the project will automatically adjust accordingly, assuming the family has been set up correctly. Okay, so it may sound uh, complex initially, but it will become clearer as we explore it further. So now we're standing in the, in the family environment. Here, it's a bit tempting to dive right into creating the geometry with the options uh, here. But that might not be the best workflow and might create issues down the road, especially if the family is complicated. Or it will at least increase the time it will take to be done with a good family. First off, create a plan for what you're going to make. You have a clear idea and you have to decide will it be internal for you maybe you don't want to make it so complex or maybe it's for your company and you might want to be a bit more bulletproof and and as breakable for possible end users so when i create a family i have a goal that it won't be necessary to open the family when inside the project if you want to change anything it should be added as parameters. <clears throat> so let's uh, go through a, a solid workflow for creating a family. I will use a metaphor. I didn't come up with it with myself, but I slightly updated it. Uh, first off, we establish the skeleton for our family. This is the reference planes that serve as the framework for our geometry. These reference planes will constrain and hold the geometry in place. Next thing, we add the muscles. This is the annotation, such as dimensions, diameters, and arc length. 
they do the heavy lifting dynamically adjusting the reference planes whenever dimensions values are changed so we have the brain this is the control center it's uh, it's all the parameters and formulas that allow us to control all the dimensions this is where we create potential complex parameters with formulas and constraints guiding the muscles to perform their tasks here lies the big job um, unless you want a stupid family lastly we move on to the skin the visible part the actual geometry after building the skeleton muscle and brain we finalize the family by adding geometry the part that is visible for the user by following this workflow we can build families that are not only structural sound but also highly adaptable and user friendly making the most of the control and flexibility that parametric design offers so now i've explained the family building workflow let's finally get started with the family creation and the fun part so i am a structural engineer so of course i love concrete i found a really simple rectangular concrete block that i want to be a parametric family as you can see here this is the block i want to create family of our parameters will be height width and length so let's start with our bounds skeleton ref planes when i draw i will use hotkeys i will not mention it but i will build, display them on the screen when i use them during this tutorial and future tutorials so ref planes can be found here with rp as shortcuts we create simple so we are now standing in uh, floor plans ref level and here i'm drawing the footprint of our model we make dimensions we press equal this means that both ref planes move evenly across the center line equal parameters our parameter we do the same here now we have set up the skeleton we will want to add and we added the muscles and now we want to add some brains our parameters so we go in we press the dimension line to modify dimensions and there we have a button that says create parameter we press that we get off the property windows we choose a family parameter i will talk about share parameters in another video we type in the name what, what it's called this is the length oops length and we will choose instance in later in the video i will talk about uh, the difference between type and instance we press ok we now have created this parameter so if we change this 3000 you will see they'll change accordingly we do the same here for our width instance. flexing means we, we we test we test our parameters to see if the, if the, they work properly so when we change the length they expand with they expand we can test so we go here to our family types our brain we can also see the dimensions we have put in the parameters we can also add parameters here by creating a new parameter or we can edit the existing ones okay so let's uh, let's test this yeah uh, make it a bit smaller okay 1500 good that works thousand okay that's on that works let's add our height we go to another view the left view in elevation we add dimension make sure you're press the right reference plane so we have two here we want that one we press the dimension line 
to create a parameter or we can let's do it another way let's go into our brain control center family types we take a new parameter we press height we make it instance this will be a common length and dimensions one thing to to i would say is it's important to organize uh, your brain make sure you have a, a solid system for all the parameters personally i prefer to arrange the most frequently used parameters at the top so and less commonly used parameters uh, longer down the list and parameters that won't be used by the end user you place in others but the height we want to we want to adjust the height so we place this under dimensions here ok so now we are setting the height here a useful tip is you can uh, move these parameters up and down the list by these two buttons we can move up, parameter up and we can move it down so what parameter will mostly most likely be used or changed most of the end user of these three i guessing height so we placed height at the bottom then length then width apply ok so we have created the parameter but our height parameter is not connected to our muscle brain is not connected to our muscle so we pre we, we click we are on dimension lines we have this label we can create a new parameter but we have created the height so we go to the drop down menu and we find okay here is height you press it and now perfect yeah. that's beautiful okay so another tips as you can see this can be pretty big letters sometimes um, and especially if we have very small numbers like this it's, it's very unreadable so you can change the scale so instance if you make it 100 big letters unreadable but if we make it smaller yeah that's maybe a one to ten is better for this but if you increase this maybe ah maybe one to twenty yeah that's good that's good very good okay so now we have the reference planes skeleton setup our muscles and our brain last thing we need is the geometry our skin so we want to create it the last thing we do many people start with it but it's often the last thing we create we go to create we have several options we will go through many of them later in this case we will just want an uh, extrusion press ok we then align it to our reference press and we see this lock we want to restrain it to the reference and we do it on the all sides perfect now our geometry here is restrained to the reference once again we go to the control center and we try it we flex we flex our model 100 yes that seems to work 1500 that seems to work okay we go to our elevation and we wanted to restrain it perfect we do a little flexing perfect so we have our model we can assign material this is this is concrete so concrete make this apply okay so we don't want the end user to change this parameter so we're not going to make it a, a, a instance parameter we can go to 3d to see our concrete block that's beautiful really beautiful we go to control center 
and just final flex see so make sure everything yes that seems to work smaller thousand oh, it's just beautiful beautiful now we are done with the family we load it into our project and as you can see we can now place our family inside our project and when you are inside our project as my goal is my goal is with every family the end user don't have to press this family if they want to change anything press this family go to edit family i don't want that i want the end user to change this family in the project and here we can it because it's a parametric family so we can adjust the height and we can adjust the length and the width just as we want it this choice here type versus instance and I will explain the difference as you can see here I have placed our concrete block this is two different families this tree here contains the instance parameters when we press one of them we will see <coughs> the, um, the parameters here in the properties these three here have type this can't be found in the properties we will need to go to edit type and we can change them here the biggest difference is that instance parameters enables you to modify the parameters value separately for every instance this means you can change a specific parameter in another instance of a family without affecting the original family. Like this concrete box, we want to change the height of just this box to 1500. As you can see, it was only this box that changed. Now we go to type parameters. This applies to all elements of that family type. So let's say we let's test that we change the height here to 1500 and you can see all the objects within the same family change their height so these three is connected and these three is not connected you can change without affecting the other a type parameter is great if you have like 20 windows that is exactly the same you can change one parameter for one of the windows and every 20 windows will change the tip for this tutorial pretty long tutorial is purge before when you're all done make sure to purge the model you will find it under manage and purge unused this means you remove everything in the project that is not used for the model like materials section tags texts it will make the family smaller so we purchase we purchase as you see number of item checked is 13 so 13 things will be deleted from this family we, we do it we do it one more time no it's seven we do it one more time Ah, it's zero so we have deleted everything that is not used to create this family and this will make the, um, the family smaller it won't take so much space when you load it into your Revit project so if you have like 150 of these concrete blocks it will make up a different for a large project so keep it small and slim it's perfect thank you for watching